with things. Adam Eaton, White Sox center fielder, sitting down with us right now. Hey, Adam, how are things? Oh, things are great. How's everything here? Fantastic. Uh, we're holding it down in the corner. I, I was looking through Twitter and saw that you had just wrapped up the kids' press conference portion of Sox Fest 2016. It was a beautiful thing. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, you know, to be honest with you, I, I play for the kids. I mean, because I was that kid at, at one point in my life. And, um, you know, to have an all-kids conference where, you know, they fired questions at us and we gave our best answers back, it, it was... Uh, you know, it kind of takes you back to when you were a kid and you were a fan. So it was, uh, it was a tremendous, uh, you know, little uh, conversation we had with those kids. Best question that got asked, whether it was to you or, or somebody else. My or... favorite color. Yeah, and that was the best one. Did, I, he, did I you go up and down the whole thing? No, it was actually just for me. I'm not, okay. I'm not sure why. I think we were the same height. That's why he, uh, he could relate better to me. But uh, that'd so, be a uh, giant seven-year-old then. That, no, come on now. Okay. No, yeah, no. Some of them were bigger than I was. I mean, they're 12 years old and they're five nine. And I'm like, man, I'm looking up to this kid already. So that would have been. I, I didn't get to six foot until I was about 15. <laughs> and that's that would have been nice. I've never, I've never even. I can only can't touch six foot. So. What uh, what was the answer to what is Adam Eaton's favorite color? It was uh, it was blue, but not the Cubs blue. Oh, more yeah, of like no, a darker blue. Like a dark, yeah, yeah so. no, good answer. Yeah, you know, that whole one. Good yeah. answer. Um, so you know we've we've got the the crowd gathered and whatnot here at Sox Fest 2016, sitting down with Adam Eaton here. Um, let's talk a little bit about 2015 before we get to the upcoming season. What uh, what was the big difference for you as you kind of split the season apart? Do you look back and, and see it in two parts the way I know some people have? looked back and kind of evaluated it you know I don't I don't know I don't really try to dissect it too much because I I lived it and uh, it wasn't that fun early and it was a lot of fun later as an individual but uh, you know realistically I've, I've tried to put it behind me and uh, move forward you know it's just one year in a, in a grand scheme of things and uh, we know as a team we didn't do what we wanted to do so um, just try to wash it and uh, you know try to duplicate uh, you know a mixture between my first year and my second year here. You having a little bit of a conversation with your head coach Todd Steverson yesterday um, and we were talking mostly with, with Todd about Avi Garcia and you know kind of what the approach is and what mentality is for, for hitters that kind of thing. How do you like uh, working with Todd? How is he different from hitting coaches that you've had in the past and you know, was there a moment last year where you guys kind of, because there's got to be some kind of bond at some point between a hitting coach and a player. Was there a spot for you that that happened? Yeah, yeah a little bit here and there. You know, Todd's a great hitting coach. He's a great, uh, you know, shoulder to lean on when you need him. Um, but uh, to be honest with you, um, at this point, in, I feel like in a lot of guys' career, it's uh, you're kind of your own hitting coach, to be honest with you. You know, you, you feel what you feel. Um, you know, there's work being done when he's not there, and, uh, you know, you're, he's not in the box with it. He's not going through, you know, mentality or your uh, your mental approach, which I think is, you know, 80 to 90 percent of what hitting is. is just your mental approach and how you're thinking the game in the box. So um, there wasn't really a time where, you know, him and I had an aha moment for any stretch of the imagination. It was just like, hey, uh, again, I always say this, and, I'm sorry for you know the little kids out there, but Paul Konerko always told me you can only suck for so long, and uh, so I've always taken what Paul has said and I've tried to use it to the best of my ability. And and uh, you know, like I said, early to mid April, early May, I definitely said that to myself uh, quite a few times, and then it just turned turned around and we started heading in the right direction. I'm pretty sure Paul told me that uh, on a on a broadcast I was having a particularly yeah, bad exactly. day on too. Yeah, hey, you're all right. It's all right, man. You can only suck for so long. Things will be okay. It's Thanks, a great Paul. saying. It's tr it's true. You know, if you have a lot of confidence in yourself and you believe in what you're doing, um, you know, it's going to turn eventually. It's uh, it's going to go in the right direction. So you know, you, you look at the work. I, thinking back to Paul Canerco, I remember talking to him about you know some of the hitting drills that he did, all that kind of stuff. I mean, he was such a. I mean, cerebral is almost too light of a word to use when you when you talk about Paul and his approach to hitting. I mean, it was all encompassing. It was almost holistic. Crazy the way he thought about yeah, it. Yeah, very. Uh, crazy how uh, down to a science he had his swing and even when he'd be crushing baseballs there'd be still something wrong with his swing right. which is crazy but uh, you know I had a chance to hit with him um, his last year you know previous to his last year on uh, the offseason when I got traded over and right. and uh, just his worth ethic in general is uh, you know top tier I mean you, you can't uh, you can't compare it to anybody else's worth ethic but uh, at the same time he drove himself nuts because he is always trying to be perfect and and uh, you know we're all perfectionists but he's the you know Realistically, he is the you know the sign for for a perfectionist. So we talk a lot about as as baseball fans, whether it's you know any well, one specific player, or really any kind of player across the board. I kind of want to you know bring it back to looking at just baseball in general, not talking about anybody specifically. We look at offense, I think, as fans or as as members of front office and stuff, and we understand that. Offense can kind of be this up and down thing. You know, we allow for guys to have great seasons and then we go, oh, well, they can't be that good again. And then they have a nice season um, and then we go, okay, that's fine. You know, we expect that kind of thing. 
I've always thought that defense can be kind of, you know, it, it can fluctuate too. It's not the steady, yeah. constant thing that I think a lot of fans want to grant it, you know? And I just wonder if that's something that gets talked about more, you know, in the off season with you guys, or if that's something that is kind of more thought of on a, on a constant basis than, than the hitting is. Yeah, you know what? Um, yeah, for me defensively as an individual, I, was, I wasn't very good last year, and I think everybody knows that, but... Uh, um, I'm hoping that it's that way. You know, I, I, did, I put in the same amount of work. I, you know, I, uh, I tried my best. Um, you know, I don't know if it was the weather or what was going on, or if it's just I had some funky reads throughout the year and, and um, you know, made some good plays, but at the same time made some bonehead plays. So hopefully we can clean that up. I think every day, uh, you know, like you said, with the focal point on it, um, you know, up and downs, but you, you can bring defense every day. You can bring effort every day. You know, whether it's there or not, I mean, <laughs> it, it, baseball's a funny game, but, uh, you know, we just, we just really concentrate on bringing effort defensively every day, and uh, I think pitching and defense wins championships. So if we, if we want to, you know, make it to the playoffs and make it to the final destination, um, we're gonna have to pick it up defensively for sure. Are you a guy that that likes to? Uh, I think the game is kind of an overstated thing, but when you're out there in center, you know, what's what's your mindset and how is it that you? I mean, do you go through like? Like in Little League, I always used to get yelled at because it's like, Connor, you, the, the ball just got hit to you. How do you not know where you're going with the damn thing? I mean, is that do you go through that specific a process when you're out there? Yeah, I wish I wish the casual fan would just be in one of our heads for one game. And you'd be like, what in the world is going on here? This These guy guys, needs help. Oh, my goodness. Um, I mean, on any given day, yeah. just to give you a quick little scenario, you know, if I'm sitting in the outfield, um, you know, first of all, I'm checking the inning, the outs. Um, then I'm, I'm picking up, so Chris Sale is throwing his tendencies, what he likes to do in certain counts. I know his percentages, he throws changeups, what he throws fastball and what count early on, late. Now, what's about the hitter? You know, is it Miguel Cabrera? Does he go really well the other way? Now about the wind. Now in Chicago, the wind is unreal terrible um it swirls you have to pick up trash on the um on um you know the track because sure. the, the trash the trash on the track usually tells me where it's going so if it's going back and forth slush and we're in trouble like you better hold on to your hat um and then i have to check you know i check my left field my right fielder my second base and my shortstop now how are they feel on their knees bad their, their arm is their arm good are they going to come out you know more in a cut and relay is my left fielder how's he doing is he hitting well is he in a bad mood is he in a good mood all these things run through my mind and then the lastly the weather you know where's the sun at, you know, uh, how am I going to play him with the depth and whatnot? So, all those things come into my mind, and the catcher as well. You know, who's pitch, who's catching because he makes realistically he makes the decision with call, uh, pitches to be called. So, all right. So now here's the wind and the pitch. Ball two, two and one. Now you do it all over again? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, now it's 2-1. and one. Uh, It's a ball. You know, a 2-0 -oh is probably playing to pull. Um, you know, 2-1 still, I'm probably still playing to pull with Miguel Cabrera. But he likes to go oppo, so I may have oh, an he'll open do it stance. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I might have an open stance here. You know, Chris throws change-ups late in counts, so maybe he might pull one. So maybe I'll square up just a tick more. You know, I looked at Melky. I looked at Avi. Hey, what are they doing now? Avi's moved because the sunflower seed spit over here, and it didn't break. So he's going to move over two steps and pick it up, put it back in his mouth. Sure. And, and now he's moved over, so now I have a different gap that I have to move over and so, uh, all these go through so my mind. So Adam, who who rescues you from this when you get home? No, seriously. My I mean, wife. Because, yeah. <laughs> oh, is, that, is, that the, is that the dynamic that you guys have? Because you have to, and, and I know I've talked to players about this before, like when you have to shut it off at some point and return to being a normal human being, or as, as close as we get anyway. Yeah, no, uh, definitely my wife and family, they get the brunt of it mostly. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a very stressful game. I love the game, trust me, but uh, yeah, turning it off is very difficult, especially right. you say, you know, last two, last two years I've lost a lot of hair. I've you know, gained a lot of white hairs in my beard. I feel like I'm going to have a little roche gray beard uh, at the end of my uh, my chin here shortly. Are you growing it out again this year? Because I remember last as season. As long as wherever Jerry is. Jerry Reinsdorf around here? I haven't he seen He needs him. to let me grow my beard out. Did, did you have a talking to? I mean, did you bring the clippers down no, to the clubhouse? sometimes he just sends a little note down, hey, have sure. you and trim it up. It looks awful. And I'm like, I have an ugly face. I need to cover up as much as I can. Like, help me out here, Jerry. He, does he not? I mean, how do you explain that? That's what I'm you saying. I'm like, hey, down. Rochi's got one. Why can I have one? You gotta find him behind the cage one day. Just be like, Jerry, Jerry listen, this is the deal, sir. You don't want this face. You don't own. You don't own the, the team or anything. Let no, me tell yeah, you how this yeah, is gonna go. That's that's because that's a real good way to start a relationship. Yeah, with your owner. I'll be yeah. traded the next day. <laughs> Adam Eaton here sitting with us for another minute or two. Um, I, I was talking to with Tyler Saladino on to close the show last night, and we got into a discussion with Tyler about tuna fishing. Awesome. And the man is an insane, I mean, I don't know if insane does it justice, but he is a devoted 
tuna fisherman. Have you been out on a boat with Tyler, whether it's for tuna or anything else? Because I know you fish and hunt a little bit too. Absolutely. But which one are you are more into, and have you been out on a boat with Tyler? I have not been on a boat with Tyler. Probably a good idea, to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah, he gets out there too. It's you know 20, 15 miles offshore. Um, he's more of a salt guy. I'm more of a fresh guy myself. Yeah, same. Uh, living in Michigan and then here in Chicago. But I went fishing with him. Uh, a couple of times here in Chicago, uh, you know, on an off day here and there, but um, knows his stuff for sure. Um, but, uh, you know, great teammate. I'm excited to have him uh, on board this year. And, uh, you know, I think he's only going to help the mix. But, yeah, fishing-wise, he's over my head because salt, salt's so much different than fresh, in my opinion. I'd make fun of him because I'm like, okay, you're tuna fishing, all right. The little thing beeps. You throw it out there and you wait. It's like... Wait a second here. Like, you're, oh, you're, a, you're a good positive. boat. You're a good boat driver. All of a sudden now, like you just that's what you do. You know, freshwater. You got to find the bass, and in different seasons. And I'm sure there is some with tuna, but I just like giving them a hard time about it. Oh, you got to. I mean, the the, the divide between saltwater and freshwater fish. It's never gonna. It's we're never different. gonna heal that. No, it won't. We're happen. never gonna heal that thing. <laughs> and I feel like it's different for for you know for guys like you know who enjoy the the hunting and fishing kind of aspect of the off season. You know, you're not if you're not a golfer, you can't take the off. You you can't go on the off day. Get up in a stand and yeah. put some camo on and do your thing. Yeah. You got to find some other kind of hobby during the season. No, definitely. Uh, um, it's it's funny because the boys always say it's this is the off season. You know, in, you know August, September, right? Um, and then in seasons, you know October, November, December when and when the bucks start flowing. So um, same thing with me a little bit. I, again, I love to fish. I love to ice fish. I live, I live in Michigan uh, in the off season and in Arizona, of course. But uh, um, yeah, you got to keep your mind going some way and get yeah. away from it. So. Um, you know, we went fly fishing a couple of times in Minnesota on the, the off days, and just, uh, I mean, it does a lot for your brain, does a lot for team chemistry just to get out and experience and have, have uh, some camaraderie with the boys, so. Adam, appreciate you stopping by. Good talking to you Thanks, as sir. always. We'll see you uh, in spring training. Adam Eaton, White Sox center fielder here on White Sox Weekly.